Hey, hello everyone, Mecha here, and I'm here with a Fire Emblem 6 The Binding Blade speedrun along with Kirby Master. How are you doing? Hello, doing all right. Um, this is my run for beating the game in FE6, which I ran like two or three years ago. Um, yeah, and we're just commentating over this because it's after um, Mecha and Raisins finished their playthrough of The Lending Blade, which is a good time. I thought it would be kind of cool to show off a 80% speedrun of FE6. So this is um, all done on console, so th there is no like F um, RNG scrambler, no mods like skipping guides and stuff like that. So it's just a very different kind of run from what you might be used to from trap races and stuff. Um, that means its entire run is RNG manipulated, but it also just means it's a different kind of run. Um, so I think just like with the Radiant Dawn playthrough we did, commentate over, we'll kind of be assuming that you guys are somewhat familiar with how FE6 works, who the characters are, and some of the basic mechanics and so on. And right here we have Marcus. He's intentionally missing everything. That's fast. <laughs> That's intentional to, for two reasons. And it was a massive pain in the ass to manipulate because, um, one, killing stuff costs time. And two, we need to conserve silver lance uses. Oh, so. I thought it was just for the fighter that now didn't end up not attacking him. Like the guy is stuck behind the other guys, but that makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah, that too. That also was a bonus. Um, so we wanted to like kill the first few fighters on the first turn, just because they don't, so they won't bother us. But now that we're, we didn't kill anyone on turn two, and now that, like we're out of range of all of them, they're not really gonna do much. So and this boss is kind of a pain in the butt because we have to land two 64 percent display hits to kill him with the silver lance, I think. That's gonna be a trend, by the way. Really annoying boss kills. <laughs> <laughs> That's about right. I mean, FE6 thrones and gates hammer, right? I do want to quickly yeah. mention, like, I know that you say RNG is manipulated and the game is like, um, you, you know what's going to happen. But at the same time, I do think it's still really hard to get the best time possible on this kind of category because you still have to know exactly how to manipulate the RNG uh, live. And you also still have to figure out the fastest way to manipulate your way through it. Even if you're able of always getting crits and always getting dodged, etc. It might not always be the fastest route. So I do mm, think there are actually really... some examples of that. Yeah. So. We're kind of doing the standard, I think this is a pretty standard LTC strat, if I remember correctly. Um, Marcus on the fort, where, yeah. Yeah, we put Marcus on the fort and take drop him. Um, actually, I got a black screen again. Hold on. Now you shouldn't be having one. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it was, <laughs> Discord was just, problem, it's that yeah. happens. Nah, it was my problem. <laughs> it was me. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even blame Discord for that one. Yeah, I noticed that Marcus is actually killing everything. I, I, I have expected him to like not do it so that the enemies would like not get countered. But at the same time, these enemies would be annoying if they stayed alive for your first routine. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. Yeah, and like it's also just convenient that Marcus didn't kill someone because he gets to feed Roy a nice kill and some experience. Yeah, I was gonna bring that up. You're actually training Roy. Normally, training units in a you know speedrun is kind mm -hmm. of bad. You usually just rely on units with really good bases. But I guess that's a problem with heavy six, right? Not many units have good bases. Yeah, you, you, like, Marcus is obviously really good, but he just isn't gonna cut it after the first third of the run, really. So you kind of have to train some units, and... Well, we have Shauna, who our first Pegasus Knight. Spoiler alert, we're gonna train her a lot. And then we also have Roy, who we have to ferry to every throne anyway, so it's just convenient to train him up. So we found a nice, convenient RNC to get a nice crit there. <clears throat> yeah, is it is it because he needs to get to the throne, or is it because he needs to survive the drops in the throne? Because I've always felt like the latter was the case with FE6. Yeah, like, both, so really. Okay. And it's just also helpful for him to like help chip away at a boss or kill some enemies on the way, and so on. Yeah, because every chapter in FE6 is C's, and so you have like a couple of like, generic plans ready for like almost every boss go, I feel like. One of which is, like you just said, like just drop Roy in, in front of the boss and start chipping him down. Oh. Watch his enemy phase, by the way. Yeah. So, <laughs> this enemy phase is just a complete miracle. Like, you, there's so little, you just cannot find a perfect seat for everything, but really? sometimes you just find a miracle. So, that was a double 12% crit, double 75% display hit. So, that was a 1.1% chance to kill the boss. <laughs> we just happened to get this level up. <laughs> Bro. Because the spider would kill him, but Roy got a crit on him and dodged with 32 hit rates. Uh huh. <laughs> and then, just wait for it. Just wait for it. <laughs> wait for it. After this, yeah, just wait for it. Yeah, I think any, it's a mercenary that attacks. Any moment now. There, I, there's a merc that attacks, I think. Yeah, this yeah. one right here. I think Roy gets a crit here. <laughs> yep, that was like a 12% chance. Dude, Roy would have died Never from punished, that too. bro. Never punished. That he dodges an archer, although he would have survived. <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't think he would have survived the soldier, though. Damn. Yeah, I think he would have survived one of them, but not both. Yeah. And like, insane. Th that, that's just astronomically low odds. And then we just leave a soldier almost dead, conveniently enough for Shauna mm -hmm. to get a kill. 
Yeah, that, that turn is a real struggle for LTCs, holy shit. You just yeah. find the yeah. god seed that you could, just lines up like you that. You can do this at home. If you make the exact same movements, you'll get the exact same results. So, you know, yeah. no sharking here. This is this is how it goes every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like the GPA Fire Emblems, we never really talked much about the RNG manipulation. Mecha actually made a bit of a video on how to do it um, with a script, but... Basically, the, the GPA Fire Emblems are really deterministic. Once once you start up the game, you're always going to get the same RNG. I think the first three numbers are always 8, 50, 6, 24, for example. Um, and the RNG is not really used for anything unless you use it, basically. So, like, if you do the same things with the cursor movements, because the game uses the random numbers to determine what path to draw, or you get a level up, or if you attack an enemy, or get attacked, the game uses up random numbers, so as long as you do the same thing every time with your cursor movements and your same actions, then you're always going to get the same results. That also applies for cutscenes, dude, by the way. Like, sometimes there are enemies that units that move in cutscenes, they actually use up random numbers, so you have to be aware of that and skip the cutscenes at the right time. Yeah, I, just, I don't even remember why that is, because it, you obviously don't see the movement arrows that normally cause the RNGs to be burned. It just kind of happens. Yeah. Yeah, like some, like if you have an enemy that moves in a cutscene that wants to go like one up, one right, the game actually uses one random number to see, oh, do you want to go one up, one right? Well, one right, one up instead. And it, I guess they just didn't want to bother like programming actual deterministic paths, so they just used the RNG for that mm -hmm. cutscenes. So. Yeah. That explains a lot. And that is very helpful for like figuring out random numbers because you do need to get, especially Shadow and Roy from like base stats to pretty high levels of performance. And also Marcus, I assume, when he does eventually level up, will have to like manipulate the level up there as well. Oh, yeah, we need strength and speed on every level up Marcus gets. Oh, God. <laughs> and his growth, I don't remember what his growth, bitter or bad. I, I know his speed is 20%. I know his strength is not much better. It, it, it's all. bad. And we also have the Christmas Cavaliers just kind of helping ferry Roy around because Marcus can't really kill stuff while carrying Roy, so they're just helping out, making sure Roy Marcus doesn't have to carry Roy. Yeah, I know this game in general is really hard to play fast because almost every map feels like you're just... It's just built to engage with it almost all the way through. You have no choice but to kill most of the enemies on the map to get to the throne no matter what you do. And mm -hmm. then... Like all these soldiers, they would bother us a lot, so we kind of really want to kill them, but they're also just convenient kills for Shauna to get experience, so it's kind of a... How do we get rid of these enemies while still being efficient with our experience? It's always a trade-off, right? Cool. Like, you generally mm -hmm. want to kill the enemies that... I, I think the rule I generally take for, like, draft race routes is trying to figure out if an enemy is, like, gonna bother me, if they're gonna attack me more than once I kill them. That's generally my rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. and that's a safe rule of thumb to go by, and... You can kind of see everyone kind of cuddling down there, and that's just barely out of range of every single soldier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not oh. just like, it's not just you have to move out of range, but also you want to like only do, like make like one move per character if you can do that, or even less with like risky yeah. chains. Oh, by the way, uh, this seed is also kind of a miracle because Marcus actually lands every single hit here. Oh, he has like 70 hit on everything here. Enemy face level he, for OGs. He gets a strength speed level up there. Uh huh. And I think that's a sword cap, so he has like 60% displayed hit. What's he using? Javelin? Hand axe? Uh, hand axe. Oh, hand okay. Axe. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Gross, it's, bro. I was really scared about finding trying to find a um, random number generator seed for this because, god, trying to hit all, kill all those enemies. They will block you otherwise, so you have to kill all of them. Look, I oh. normally don't allow gore on my channel, Kirby, but I'll make an exception for you. Jeez. <laughs> Wait, um, Shannon, what are you doing? So yeah. She's actually going to grab Lou. What? Oh, she's getting some kills. That's oh, okay. It. I was like worried there. I was like, wait, Lou seems like the primary character she would skip in the speedrun, but here she is going up to his village. Yeah. The boss kills, again, we just have to land two um, 71 displayed hits, which is like 83 true hit um, with the Armor Slayer, which is going to be really useful, by the way. Um, the Armor Slayer is used throughout the entire run, and I think that starts with 20 uses. We use 19 of them by the end of the run. I think it starts with um, 18, but it's worth all 18 of them. It's so good. Yeah. It's the best sword in the game, basically. It's a really good weapon, um, and you also don't want any weapons to break, so like, you might... There's going to be a trend where you'll see like Shauna carrying like one-use javelins all over the place, just because breaking it costs time. So you want to be efficient with that. Yeah, so he's like, once you're done with him, you just put him in a convoy, right? You never break him. Yeah, you throw out a convoy or you discard it. So oh, that discarding, was right. part of yeah, that was part of the annoying thing about the routing process. It's like, how can I squeeze out all these javelin uses? That's in a way that's easy to remember, but also optimal so that none of them break. Mm -hmm. I guess we're about to see if we're gonna skip Rutger or not, because usually like moving in hard here is kind of dangerous. Okay. This, this chapter is a massive pain in the ass. <laughs> Because it's like, well, here's the thing, like, Alan's carrying Roy right now. We need Marcus to kill everything here, or else we're just gonna get in the way. But we also want to feed Shauna experience. So what we kind of do here is we get Shauna intentionally low on HP. 
Oh. Because that means enemies go after her. Um, I mean, because isn't we don't she already a better target than Marcus? Like, uh, even at full HP? Well, they're going to go after Alan if she's not at low HP. Oh. Next turn. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, because Marcus can't double while carrying Roy. So he has to kind of not be carrying Roy, but we need a way to get Roy to Marcus. So Alan is carrying Roy right now. But we also want Shauna to get experience. So the best way to handle that is to get Shauna low on, low on HP, but still land all her hits and then not die. Mm -hmm. So it's... And we're using javelins and hand axes in FE6. Yeah, they're so, kind of gross. I mean, it's, at least it's normal mode, it's not hard mode, so it's not that bad, but it's still like, they're still like 60 to 70s at yeah, best, it's, I think. It's, it's generally around 60 to 70 hits for most of them. So. Mm -hmm. Also, there's like a calf bothering Waltz like all the time. All the time. Is it fast to not, <laughs> not kill him? Uh, there's, well, that's one, that's one reason. And the other reason is um, we kind of, this is not a deathless run. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll, 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 say, I'll just say that. There's a reason for that. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I spoiled it. I made him spoil it. Oh, this guy's like, nah, yeah. I'm not going after Shan, I'm going after Roy. Yeah, yeah I don't know why, but that's actually good, because we, we want Roy to be blocked off. Um, because if Roy's not blocked off properly, then Clarina will recruit herself, and that's slow. <laughs> yeah, so like, Marcus is conveniently blocking Roy from above, and Roy's surrounded on the left and right, so Clarine can't reach him on this turn. It's oh goodbye Wolf. Oh F. Yeah, okay. it's it's odd that they do that because I know Roy is high priority for most enemies. Like he's actually like in a class that enemies prioritize over over other classes sometimes. But I found it odd that like they attack Shanna and then they switch to Roy once Shanna was lower on HP. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't 100 percent understand how AI works. It's I don't think anyone fully understands. I know I do know that Roy has like a priority system. But I know there's a lot more to it than that too. So. Yeah, I think Roy's class and thieves enemies love attacking them. Even like with classes or stats being equal. Oh no, safe. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is actually really important because well, one, Walt died. That means both of our cavaliers on the left side. Oh, thanks, Walt. Deployment Wolf. slot's gone. Yeah. So um, we also need to maintain the same RNG seat from the end of the previous map because the seat that we want here is really tight. So um, we're going for a two-turn strat here, which is which is thanks to Walt's sacrifice. Um, <laughs> yeah. Walt saving turns all over the place. Yeah, um, and the Nomad, so there's most of this is self explanatory. Just one thing to note the Nomad has a 50% chance to one shot Shauna, so she kind of has to dodge that. Um, and then what we need to do on the upcoming turn is Shauna needs to land a 73 displayed hit on the Merc. Um, and then Marcus has to kill the boss with a 50% hit, 5% crit, <laughs> which is a 2.5% chance. Um, and he needs the strength speed level up. So, um, I, so if you, I did a reset before this map. There is still a seed where you can do that, but it takes about an extra one minute of RN burns to oh find God. that. Yeah. That's the thing with so, like RNG yeah. manip is like, it's not a guaranteed time save to have RNG manip. Like it can still take forever to get the right seed. Mm -hmm. Like if I use, if I reset it for a different seed, then it would probably be faster to take a third turn than trying to go for a two turn with the crit. But because I'm maintaining the same RNG seed from the previous map, we can, pretty quickly go for this stupid kill with Marcus. Yeah. So right here, we're going to see that's all the burns we're doing right there. That's it. This massive clog right here is a great example of why F6 draft racing never really got off the ground, because it's just so hard to get through chapters quickly. I remember I, I tried to doing a practice draft race once. It took me an hour just to get through this chapter. Like, not this chapter alone, but like through it. this chapter. Ugh, I believe it. F6 is such a clog. <laughs> Uh, speaking of clogs, <laughs> <laughs> this one isn't so too bad. This one, I think you can just one round everything with Marcus Handax at the top, right? Well, you say that. okay. Well, yeah. If you're like draft racing or playing this casually, it's not a bad map. Um, what we're trying to do here in the speed run is pretty horrible because we're trying to find a balance between making sure we kill everything in the way with Marcus with hand axes. Oh yeah, and get Shauna low on HP again, so everything goes after her on turn two. That's gonna be a pattern, by the way. Um, I mean, this one doesn't seem so bad, right? Because Marcus gets the uh, armor nice, but everyone else is like, oh, I can attack Shana instead, let me do that. Yeah, except Shana has terrible hit rates. Well, not terrible, but she has like 70, 80 display hits, something like that. I don't remember off the top of my head. See, um, this is why we yeah. wait 60 turns in Shepard 2 to like get a B support with Roy, okay? Yeah, I know, I know that's a thing actually in draft races, and it's so worth it. Like, it's actually a pretty nice support. <laughs> So yeah, Shauna needs to get me get low on HP, kill everything possible with an Iron Lance, and then get this level up. That level up's really important, because now she can actually two-shot the soldiers with the Javelin. She couldn't before. But now that she can two-shot them with Javelins, um, we have to find a really horrible RNG seat here. 
Um, and then ha hopefully she kills everything with the javelin, which she'll kill almost everything. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those cases where I kind of have to compromise because like we don't have space to burn a lot of random numbers here to get far in our DC. I think I tested like around 200 random number seeds, and this is the best I found that was pretty reasonable. Okay. Um, and you'll notice that like she has to dodge everything and not die. And ideally she kills everything, but you notice she didn't kill something. Yeah. I mean, and not dying is pretty good. <laughs> Yeah. When you're holding a javelin at 2 HP, I don't think you can be very picky. Yeah, like, you, you, you just have to take what you can at some mm -hmm. points. So, and we have to get some good level ups, too. So. Yeah, I mean, you miss speed there, but again, not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, speed's actually sort of not relevant for her, kind of. Just because she already has so much at base, so it's, like, not that important. Um, she, I think she needs strength every single level up until Milady's chapter. She cannot miss a single point. And she needs 18 skill for a strat later on. It's almost like this character has to kill bosses in FV6. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like that enemy phase was a much bigger pain in the butt than it looks like. And it kind of shows because like I left one soldier alive and just because I, I just couldn't find anything better, really. That's reasonable. Oh, okay, this boss is a pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> Marcus <laughs> has an phase. iron sword. Marcus has an iron sword because, uh, what is a hit rate? So Marcus has a 67 hit on this boss and he has to land that with 4% crit. Um, and he actually can't double this boss either, because he's so fast, even on normal mode. Oh, so he killed with a crit iron sword? Damn. Yeah, the iron sword. If I used any other weapon with the same crit chance, he would miss. <laughs> F. Yeah, so like, the iron sword's kind of needed. This is actually one of my favorite chapters in the speedrun, actually. Um, so, like, we're actually deploying to Axe Bros, which is pretty cool. Yeah, they're building support on turn 1, too. Very helpful. <laughs> Do they build support on the next turn? I don't remember. Oh, yeah, they are. Okay. I think it's like when the turn starts, it checks if they're adjacent. So, yeah. Oh. We'll just I build the support. Congrats. Okay, yeah. So, we're doing this the typical thing where we try to use a take drop to get Roy as close as possible to drop. Um, so, we can recruit him as soon as possible because what's better than one paladin? Two. Um, yeah, because, like, even yeah. if you'd, like, just turn him blue for this chapter, he <laughs> waste a bunch of time, I think, if he was green. Yeah, that crit's really important, by the way. That's a 12% crit. Oh, yeah. 13% crit. Just because we need that Merc to not bother us anymore. Yeah, normally you have to, like, that Merc is, like, really annoying for normal playthroughs because he gets in your way as you're trying to get Roy to the boss. And by trying to kill him with the other units, you end up using a lot of turns because Mercs are annoying to kill. Mm -hmm. so Marcus and Sean are kind of taking the left side, so a little bit of self-improvement and also just clearing a path. Yeah. So they can kind of help out the take drop. Oh, yeah. so hard Hammer. to play fast. Wade with a hammer, he had um, he had 53 base hit, so he had 59 hit on that armor knight, so... <laughs> yeah, the Axe is being useful in a speedrun, you don't see that every day. God, I mean, they're not terrible to use sometimes, the Axe Bros, but they don't make it easy on you sometimes in like FC6. Yeah. So right now I have um, Trek carrying Roy, um, and then Jorot's gonna kind of be in the middle and distract a bunch of enemies towards the middle. So like, since this is the... Well, first of all, I'm buying some door keys and chest keys because we'll leave them throughout the entire run. And we kind of want to avoid combat as much as possible. This chapter is kind of a big cluster F, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, and we don't actually want to kill everything because that costs a lot of time and is also really unreliable. Yeah, I so, thought, like, yeah. in general, if, in FE6, if you're using a javelin and a hand axe, you're often not killing anything. So you're often better off just killing the things that attack you one range instead than trying to use two range. Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing here. Jorot's kind of getting attacked by a lot of two range units. And this is this is a strat that I came up with and I'm pretty proud of here, actually. So, like, what's going to happen here is um, Sean is going to open a door with a door key she bought. Um, I'll explain that options later. Uh, we're t taking off all weapons from Trek. Trek's going to pass Roy to Jorot. Jorot's going to bring Roy up towards the boss. And now Trek is actually going to be contributing by being bait. <laughs> nice. I was expecting some sort of risk of shame because there was like multi units all over the map, so like I was ready for it, but damn. <laughs> yeah, I was considering getting Trek killed off here outright, but um, it actually ends up being faster to not kill him off because killing off units does cost a bit of time and it's, it's not really hard to keep him alive, and you'll see what I do next turn too. Oh, you mean like getting him killed off for the, the good old rescue trick? Or. Oh, uh, no, just kill, killed off in general so enemies don't bother me anymore. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah, yeah. Because, like, generally, you, just, you don't worry about a survival, right? Like, if he dies, he dies, so be it. If he yeah. doesn't die, you know, cool, that takes less time. I kind of wanted him to stay alive because I want all the enemies to kind of group around him. Because right now, Shauna's out of range of, like, almost everyone now. Pretty much no one's going to bother her for the rest of the map, except, like, one wyvern. Okay, and, and still can see. 
Oh, all right. Yeah, he can't, but this turn's gonna go by pretty quickly, because... See ya. Yeah, no one gets attacked <laughs> yet. Goodbye. <laughs> Yep. Well, I mean Shanna, but that's good, so it's fine. Yeah, we want experience on her, so like it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. and now all the, that giant group of red enemies, they were just gonna chill. I mean, they're trying. Oh, two to me a stake, you can stop moving. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <Yeah. laughs> oh, and I guess you we're do miss a, a bunch of villages here. here. Ooh. Yeah. We're getting a killing edge that's gonna be really useful with Roy later. Yeah, so. I remember those were really nice, but there's a lot of items in that chapter that... Could have been good. I guess, like, for example, the Hero Crest is a big deal in normal play, but not for you. But, like. Yeah, but we don't care about it. And yeah. we're actually not going to be buying boots in this run just because it's. If yeah. You, boots are really good, but if we buy them, we're only going to benefit from with them from, like, one map. And it's just too much of a detour and we'll beat the game. Yeah, I can see how they maybe save time if you didn't have to, like, A, gather a bunch of gold, and B, get the member card, and C, get the silver card, and D, mm -hmm. all the other stuff. Nice level up, Marcus. So yeah, I'm, I wasn't <laughs> that, expecting that to buy. Also, because yeah. this is any percent, right? So you're not going to do good ending. So yeah. So something to explain. We never really explained too much about that. So um, all chapters is a category that like I strongly prefer, and I think is more interesting to be honest. But um, I figured that this would be kind of interesting to watch just because I've done a marathon run of all chapters on RPG Limit Break in 2019. Which, by the way, I highly recommend watching that. That's probably the final one I'm most proud of. I'll link it down below if I remember, which I won't. Yeah. <laughs> So the goal of that is to beat every chapter in the game. That includes guidance, and that includes like the true ending maps. Um, in this category, we don't care about that. We are going to try to skip every single guidance. And usually it's pretty easy. Um, all we have to do is get a little killed, foil alert, so we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> um, so there are some downsides to that, just because like one of the downsides to not having all chapters is that we have less time to build a Roy Shana support. So we're not going to be able to get that. Um, because I think that costs 60 turns to do. Um, but we do actually get that support in all chapters, which is really valuable, but we just don't have the time for that at any percent. That makes sense. I guess the other drawback is like you have to unfulfill the requirement requirements. So in this case, it's killing Lina, which is two combats, but sometimes it's like waiting turns to you know, yeah. get past the turn limit, because you can't skip guidance with a yes or no prompt like in FE7. And the other thing I haven't really mentioned is that I kind of went to the options menu a few times. Um, we kind of want tech speed to be slow, usually, because, like, if you have tech speed on max, then whenever you see, like, a character portrait, you cannot skip it completely. Like, so, like, when you saw Lilina die up there, you didn't see any portrait at all. That's because tech speed was on slow. Okay, um, so Koei Tecmo, like, very cool. I know you didn't make yeah. this game, but that sounds like you, so I'm just gonna blame you. So it saves about a third of a second for every character portrait that shows up, if you skip it properly. So we saved one third of a second on Lilina's death, we save two thirds of a second for every boss kill because you see the bot's portrait twice typically. Once for fighting them and once for killing them. Um, there's like one time where I change the tech speed to maximum. That's for shopping trips, which we did in the last map. <laughs> but usually in the GBA finals, you want tech speed to be slow just so you can skip the boss portraits. Very minor, but it does add up and it's worth it. If you, the mass, you kill a boss every map, pretty much. I can't imagine having to care about less than a second in something that's not a task, but here we are. Yeah. Like, he's doing um, this by hand. It's crazy, man. It saves like almost a second per map, so if you add it up, that's like around 20 seconds over the course of the entire run. So like, if you can change that option in less than 20 seconds, which you typically can, then it's worth it. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm talking about this now is because it's this is chapter eight. It's chapter eight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's chapter I mean, eight. Yeah. I still think the logistics of chapter eight are somewhat interesting, like trying to maximize rescue chains, but they go by a little too fast to so, like comment in detail exactly what they're doing. But generally, well, just carry Roy across. I, I think. think this turn explains a big difference between the LTC and the speedrun. Um, just watch. This turn is a very good difference between that. There you go. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the turn doesn't cost that. Like, Shanna just naturally fell behind so many turns behind a unit with one more move than her. So yeah, it's, it's just a lot. It's just much faster to just move mm -hmm. her once, one extra I mean, time. There was already a big difference like in that. Out. I think Marcus is like in the front line right now, like right? Not Zealot, Marcus? Mm -hmm. That's Marcus right now, yeah. Yeah, so in LTC you would also see Zealot here at the front lines, or Jared, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call him. Like, he is nice, but like, I don't really want... Moving an extra unit per turn just costs a lot of time. A lot more time than yeah. that one turn you saw costed, so... I mean, this we, turn we didn't turn text to slow for nothing, like, come on. <laughs> This turn, it sucks, because Shauna and Marcus have to kill almost everything with javelins, and survive, and get the level ups. And you kind of notice Roy's in the back there, and that's because he's out of range of all two range attackers. We just need to make sure there's a path open for Shauna and Marcus to go through. Mm -hmm. Or rather, Shauna to go to the south. 
Yeah. I mean, it's not that bad if you have to go through the chest room, right? Because there's mm -hmm. no enemies there. It's the same squares. Hey, we... So Marcus is going to go through the chest room um, for two reasons. One, there's a light brand that we want, so we, we're going to get that now. There it is. And then two, we kind of want Shauna to go south for a bit more self-improvement and also killing these mages. Or else they're going to bother us near the end of the map. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I know you, you thought it all out, but the mages, if you're going to fight them anyway, you could also do it later, right? It wouldn't be terrible? You could technically do it later, yeah. I mean, I'll just really thought about killing them be later. Here anyway, but. I haven't really thought about killing them later, honestly. Mm, it's, it's just convenient to do it here at two range, Shauna. I, mean, I could imagine, like, for example, if, once you're in that area to get ready for the seas, you probably have Roy along with you who make killing them harder. So I would imagine yeah, that might be Yeah, because he doesn't wise. have range. Yeah. Oh, that mage right there has an air caliber. Yeah, I, <laughs> I remember him. <laughs> I remember Shauna dying to him before. Not good. So at this point, Shauna has Shauna's has been using like two javelins this entire run so far. She's both of them are at one use now, I think. Okay. So she needs just a new just one. because, yeah, using we she needs she'll eventually need a new one, and we also don't want weapons to break because that costs time. So a lot of routing with this map is just come down to like figuring out how which javelin to use to make sure we get right. 19 out of 20 uses exactly. Time to see if we're killing Cass for that time save. Uh, that's not Cass. That's the wrong thief, Kirby. Please uh, redo the run. <laughs> oh, oh, there, there we go. go. There we go. All right, good. He, he saved it. So yeah, notice that we didn't even see Cass' portrait because yeah. tech speed was on slow. Yeah, we killed two generic thieves. Yeah. We we want to kill them because um, if we don't kill them now, then they're just gonna keep running around and wasting time. So. Yeah, Cass specifically is like a lot of reinforcements killed just in one turn by that, right? Mm -hmm. So this boss is terrible. Marcus has to land two 50-ish hit rates on this boss in a row. And and Marcus needs every single point of strength, by the way, because now Shauna has to do um, a double Ooh, Slim Lance gross. hit here. I mean, she should be able to damage him with the Slim Lance, but here we are in this alternate reality. Yeah, if either Marcus or Shauna didn't get strength, this wouldn't work. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and she, ha and she had to land, I think, like two 40-ish percent hit rates, I think, with Slim Lance. Might have been higher than that. I don't remember. That, that boss sucks. <laughs> Take my word for it. It sucks. He sucks. Okay, I was about to ask you if Roy could seize there, but then I remembered that he still had to get the Elysian Whip from the chest room. Yeah, we really want the Elysian Whip. So, no Gaiden. Yay. Rip Lina saves, like, Rip what, Lina. 20 turns? Saves quite a bit of time. Saves, like, five minutes? Turns. Well, yeah. I don't know how long that chapter takes in all chapters. Probably not five minutes. It's probably, like, two or three. It's not a long map. A lot of pits, though. Oh, shout out to Wendy. Thanks yeah, for the javelin. Free javelin. Very nice. Yeah, Fog of War. Um, one of the things we have to optimize in speedruns for Fog of War is to position our units so that we don't see anyone move, ideally. Oh, that's smart. Mm -hmm. That was actually something that I didn't realize until I think like a really old post by Don Don I read. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second, that's that's actually smart. I didn't think about that. And that was like relevant for like a guiding chapter later on in all chapters. Where I was like, mm -hmm. like Don Don had like a post like 10 years ago where he's like, I put these units here. To make sure that we don't have vision, so that we don't see these units move. I'm like, oh my god, why didn't why didn't I think of that? <laughs> yeah, in general, enemies will not move in this chapter with only like Shanna deployed, basically, right? Because they don't yeah. see the way they can like reach her ever. Most of them can't reach her, so yeah, that healing animation is unfortunate. But like, if I moved her to any other talent, promoted her, then she'd be in range of enemies, or I make other enemies move. So, oh, also say hi to Fur and Shin. <laughs> say hi now before we uh, get past them. Fortunately, we don't yeah. have to kill them. This boss sucks, by the way. Uh, we have around a 50% hit rate and a 4% crit with Slit Silver Lance. So, it sucks. <laughs> Can I say this boss sucks next time? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much every boss sucks. In okay, yeah, sure. You can say that. If you see a boss, just assume they suck. <laughs> Exception being the guy named Tick. I think he's the one in one of the Master Percival joints. But, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, he kind of sucks, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. In a metaphorical sense. Wait. Oh, nobody moved there. What the hell? Wasn't mm -hmm. she in you know, like a traversable square? Oh, well. Yeah, yeah don't ask. I'm, I'm not complaining. No one's moving. <laughs> so it's saving me a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> this is very clear now. But a pirate thinks he can reach her, though. Or no, he's just Hi, going for geese. village. That's right. Oh, so, geese. Fun wound, fact. Geese wounds um, everything. Yeah, but fun fact. So, like, I actually found it originally when I routed this chapter. Um, I found, like, an RNC that unfortunately didn't work on an emulator. So I have to reroute it, and when I rerouted it, I just happened to stumble upon this random number seed here, where this mercenary kills the geese, and that ended up being faster. 
I imagine. So... What's the alternative? That he like not kills the fighter and then stays alive? Yeah, he just he just stays alive and does nothing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, Roy has the light brand here. Okay. Yeah. So Roy has a light brand to make sure that the shamans don't actually block him. Oh. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, this boss sucks. Just in time. Just in time. <laughs> He's not quite as bad, but yeah, he sucks. It's, I think, like a double 60-ish hit rate. Uh, my notes say 68 is what he did, so a 60 he has NOS, chance. right? But I don't think it matters. I don't think it mattered, yeah. So and we got the Worm Slayer, which is actually a really good weapon in this game. Yeah. I think it's, like, pretty respectful stats in its own right, and then effectiveness on Wyverns, which is pretty relevant later. Isn't that another, like, relevant thing that, but compared to all chapters, that you don't have to do Randall and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, we don't use it to Randall. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. You know, not to Randall specifically. I mean, it'd be good, but no one has that swords. But, like, the Maltite, I remember being pretty useful in all chapters for Shanna. Oh, yeah, the Maltite's really useful, like, in the endgame of all chapters. Yeah, because you get it so late. Really <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, we don't use any Holy Relics or anything like that here until, besides, like, the Finding Blade. Also, yeah. we got our Dancer. She's going to do nothing. Yeah, it's unfortunately just like a starting position, like the bottom left of the deployment, so she can't really get you anywhere. And also, the dancing animation sometimes just takes too much time to use in this speedrun. Yeah, it's kind of funny. this is actually one of the interesting spots because, like, there is there is a three turn with the dance that's like around the same speed as what you're seeing here. This is a four turn. Um, the reason why the three turn ends up being slower is not only be, do we have to deal with the dancing animation, but we also have to manipulate a much more annoying RNC to kill the boss. But by taking a four turn, um, more enemies burn RNs by moving around, and thus we don't have to do as many RN burns by killing this boss here. Wow. This boss sucks, by the way. Yeah, he does. <laughs> uh, my notes say I had to manipulate an Iron Sword crit to get Sword Rank with a 75 display hit, 4% crit. So that was a 3% chance to kill. Is Shanna at E Swords right now still? Or yeah, she's at E Swords. Okay. We want to get D Swords, um, so. Um, I'm, I'm going to be menuing really quickly, but I'll be using swords whenever convenient to build up her sword rank, because she needs Armor Slayer just for Murdoch. And Armor Slayer's D, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was like, are you trying to get Worm Slayer or something? Like, what? Like, okay, Armor Slayer for Murdoch makes a lot of sense, actually, because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean... Yeah, right there. I just used the sword. <laughs> I mean, this chapter... If, if no one is surprised yeah. to use the sword in this chapter, Kirby. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this chapter is actually pretty cool, I think. Um, so, because there's a little bit of a side objective we have with Marcus and Golm. I mean, not Golm. <laughs> Thief. Chad? <laughs> Thief, yes. Thief that starts with a C. Um, <laughs> so we have to move Colm out of range because it's a sleep priest. And um, even if we can manipulate dodging the sleep animation, the sleep attack, the sleep animation costs several seconds. So we don't want to see any of them at all. So we kind of move Colm. I keep saying Colm. Just, just keep calling him <laughs> Colm. It's fine. It's fine. No okay, I'll, I'll just call him Colm. Well, yeah. He's apparently Colm in FB6. So yeah. I had to move Colm out of the way. And he actually can't move towards the door without being in range at some point, so there's going to be a turn later where I actually have Marcus do rescue him and lose like one tile, and then just drop him in the same spot later. What if you discarded Colm's weapon, though? Then he wouldn't get targeted, right? Would he not? I mean, I think the enemies usually don't try to... I mean, I might be confusing it with Berserk. I know Berserk doesn't go for any people with weapons. I don't know about Steve. I never actually, I never actually tried that. Mm. Maybe I'll try load up an emulator and try it. I'm, I know it's the case for Berserk, and it might not be the case for Sleep. I don't think it's the case, but I've never tried it, mm -hmm. so someone can someone can probably. I think it's still that. like a legal target for them, but it might lower his priority a bit. I don't know. Worth trying, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Shanna purposely not killing these guys because it's not fast enough. She can like not. She's gonna be in range of them again. Yeah, she's going to. Well, that tile's kind of convenient because she's only in range with yeah, range now. Yeah, I used to tile a lot for like Pegasi and stuff like that, and Roy as well. Very nice. The corridor is annoying. And right there, like, if I, Marcus didn't pick up um, Chad, then he would have been a range of the Sleep Priest, so... Yeah. And now we're gonna see our boy go and work. Yeah. Put in some work. This stupid warrior. Yeah, this turn is a massive pain in the butt to manipulate, just because, like, we need good levels on Roy, and... I mean, his hit rates are pretty good, because swords on Axe users, but... Phil. Yeah, he's just gonna kill Edge, right? He's just gonna kill Edge, yeah. Which is a pretty good weapon. Mm-hmm. I think the warrior has a hand axe as well, but obviously he can't use it right now because the fighter is blocking the way. Mm -hmm. Which is really convenient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this warrior does not suck. The boss does, though. Actually, this boss is probably fine. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Actually, no, he's not for you because you don't have any Worm Slayer weapons, right? I forgot. <laughs> well, we do have the Worm Slayer, but um, I, I have some hit rates to read out for you later. When oh, no. <laughs> it's oh, pretty no. bad. Oh, well, Roy is really good right now. Holy sh... Yeah. It this is going to be like the best Roy and Shanami we'll ever see. Mm -hmm. Well, besides maybe the All Chapters one, but yeah, same yeah. idea. He's no Lin, but he's pretty good. Yeah. 
So right here, um, we're kind of we want want to kind of burn turns because one of the side objectives to unlock the Gaiden is beat this chapter in twenty turns. So we don't want to beat this in twenty turns. So we're gonna be like intentionally burning turns to work towards avoiding the Gaiden, and we're intentionally keeping like Shauna away from that sleep freeze to make sure that we don't see any sleep animations. That makes sense. Like, if you're gonna burn turns, you might as well make sure that all the turns you are forced to do are as, like fast as possible. Uh huh. Although even if it, even if we didn't have to worry about the guidance, all chapters would still do the same thing, just because burning a turn is faster than watching an animation, sleep animation. Yeah. So now we're just kind of. But burning this turns you would not do in all chapters. <laughs> yeah, this I would not do. Is Shana blocking reinforcements? Just, by the way, she's blocking a reinforcement okay. that will start happening later. And now we have the boss. So this was the only seat I was able to find that had to go on the boss because Roy has to dodge the boss's 77 display hit, which is about a 90% chance, or else he dies. And he, Roy has to land a double 60% display hit, um, mm -hmm. or a round two 70% in a row. Yeah. And that's a 1% chance. You could have healed, but that's obviously slower. Could you not have like player face crit him? Uh, he has no crit, I think. Oh, that, damn, but he has like so much kill, damn, rip. Yeah, that, that boss is a pain in the butt, and like, I did not care about his level up. That's how bad that, mm -hmm. I, that's how bad that kill is. He just conveniently got a good level up, so we got bailed out. I got bailed out. And by killing the boss, you skip a bunch of cutscenes? Um, I think it's re- I don't remember off the top of my head. I know he has like conversations about the reinforcements, that's why I'm asking. I don't remember actually. <laughs> I routed this like three years ago, so yeah, that's ask fair. me from like three, ask like past Kirby. I, I do know he has like conversations about it, but honestly, conversation skippings are so fast that it shouldn't really matter all that much. Because mm. you skip them so fast. So yeah, like we have to move Roy towards the throne, so we're gonna see one reinforcements, but. That's the hardest part of the run, counting how many turns you have to burn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to like wait too long or else the RNG is going to get screwed up. Or you just lose time. That actually has nothing to do with RNG. But, yeah. Same thing. Okay, this this chapter, I, I've watched this one before. This is one of those chapters that makes me just give up on playing fast. Or like, and by playing fast, I mean like speedrunning because it's just so hard to get past everything. Uh, I don't blame you. <laughs> also, we just dropped a five, I think it was a three silver lance. Because we're not using it anymore. And we inventory space. Yeah, I mean, dropping things is faster than like going to convoy, right? To get new things. Typically, or getting prompted to drop something. Right. I guess from like the perspective of like going to convoy to get new weapons, I guess in those cases you're in convoy anyway, so dropping isn't really all that slow. But yeah, I'm dropping is pretty fast. This chapter is pretty cool because like, well, um, well, and, and the, the manipulator route's pretty neat. So we just, we're about to get Milady, um, who's probably the, one of the best units in the game. Um, she's not quite as good in role, but she's still very, very good. Um, just because, like, she's still very good relatively to the enemies. Um, so we're not really going to be using her that much for combat, just because we already have Super Shana, and training more units costs time. But um, I am going to promote her immediately, because we really want the eight, another 8 move flyer immediately yeah. for this chapter. Would it be fair to say that she's like the equivalent of F9 Tynith? From uh, like Path of Radiance. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of funny because Gwimpage, when he Gwimpage talks about the FE6 speedrun, he like compares it to the Path of Radiance one, and they're very similar because you have you're training up your first flyer and your sword locked lord, you're faring them around, and your second super flyer is not really going to be used for combat, but rather just babysitting your dancer or being a support. And that's Milady here or Tanith in Path of Radiance. Yeah, or and carrying then eventually, voice, doesn't have to, right? Eventually, later on, both Ike and Roy get like an OP 1 to 2 range weapon only for like one or two chapters. Uh -huh. So, in a sense, they're, they're very similar speedruns. They even both give plus 5 defense. Yeah, they both do, which is kind of funny. And it's funky. I approach the boss, get the cutscene. And oh, oh, yeah, Shauna's low on HP intentionally, again. Yeah, I think that was I why she got targeted by the Wyverns over like Lady, right? Because Lady was holding yeah. Roy. You want her to be targeted so they don't block Milady. Yeah. So this is why I really want Milady to promote it immediately, because Milady is barely in range of that armory in the upper right corner, which is the Killer Lance armory, which is probably the best lance in the game. Yeah, I like the kind of chapters like a triple them. seize for that reason, because like you gotta get a boss killer in, seize the throne, but also like seize the armory to get the killer weapons. It's so good. Yeah, this boss kill is the reason why Shauna needs every strength level up in the game up to this point, and she needs 18 skill. So um, there's no way to get a Killer Lance to Shauna. Like, when Milady goes to the armory, we don't have access to the convoy because no Merlin is. So, and we can't kill the boss with an Iron Lance or any other weapon because no crit. Because the boss has a good luck stat. The only weapon that gives us crit is a Slim Lance. So, we barely two-shot the boss with a double Slim Lance crit. And the RNs that are rolled require five crit, which 
is exactly how much crit the slow man's gives. So we need every point of skill at this point. <laughs> so there we go, the double slow man's crit. Thank god this guy gets no terrain bonuses, right? I know, my god. Original, I think like an older route that Legrand Grand came up with had Roy use the Worm Slayer on the boss, which did work and was not as much of a pain in the ass to manipulate, but you lost a turn, and in this case, losing a turn is a huge time loss. Oh yeah, I was about to say, like, can't Shana use that, but like, Roy used the Worm Slayer, right, right, okay. Mm -hmm. And Shana doesn't have the Sword Rank. Yeah, exactly, which is why I was wondering how she got a Worm Slayer all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. Alright, but now we have Kill Lances. Yep, and this is the um, desert manipulation, so like, Mecha's explained it on his channel before, but for those not as familiar, um, the RNG used for finding hidden items in the desert is independent of the main RNG for like, combat and stuff. So like, you can guarantee finding a hidden item in the desert by doing a soft reset, resume chapter, and if you look at the character's stat screen exactly once, then you are guaranteed to find a hidden item. FB7 works similarly. Um, I think it works the same way in most modes except for Hector Hard Mode. Where you in Hector Hard Mode, you have to look at the inventory screen once. I don't it's remember weird. how it It's a little different in FB7, but the same idea. Um, FB8, I think with stones, you can't do that. But Desert RNG just works differently. Mm -hmm. It pulls one random number from the main RNG instead. So you can't like casually manipulate this on the fly as if, without like, pre-planning it. So yeah, we got quite a few important things. So we got a silence staff, which is actually useful in the end game. And we got the boots, which is very useful in Shana. What else did we get? I don't remember what else we pick up. Uh, you we got might be picking up a really important staff later, but eh, we'll get to it later. <laughs> <laughs> I know that we're uh, we picked up a, a new unit in Sophia, who is also the Gaim requirements, so it was nice to know you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she, she was very nice for picking up a silence staff. Um, this, I think this is the first time the speedrun uses a dancer. We've had the dancer for like four maps, but we never actually used her until now. Oh, I just realized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so funky. I mean, like I said, the dance animation costs time. And like, for example, 12, you didn't want to like use any extra turns. So like, you didn't need to save turns because, you know, guiding requirements. Yeah, we don't want any land units either, or else you like, might aggro some extra enemies or whatnot. So it's be you're better off like not using a dance in those cases. But yeah, so. This right here, um, Milady is going to go ahead and pick up a really useful warp staff um, in case you can't read Japanese. So that's kind of going to going to be kind of important. Um, and then this boss is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, so this is pretty funny. So all I cared, I don't really care much about Shauna's level ups anymore because she hit all of her benchmarks for the previous map, um, which are really tight. So all I did was try to find the first random number seed where she can get a crit on the boss. I think that's all I did. I wasn't trying to like manipulate her level up or anything. That, as long as it wasn't like terrible. Um, so uh, watch this level up as she kills this boss with a crit. Uh, every stat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I called it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I, that was just a miracle. I'm just like, um, okay, we take those. <laughs> so, like that, that's the thing. Like sometimes you. You can't just like manipulate anything you want as usual, just because like a lot of times it's not worth it. But sometimes the RNG seed just you just get blessed and you're just like, okay, we take those. <laughs> the game just doesn't work for you. Did you just move Lauren yeah. to the back of your formation? Did you not watch pitfalls? <laughs> what, what are you doing, Kirby? You're so bad that at is, this game. Back that back. is on a on a serious note, that is to keep her out of range of the paladins. Percival's group. Oh right, well, she's super Percival. Range. She's not even like if she was if she wasn't the dancer, she'd still be here. Yeah, if, if I left her in a default position, I'd have to manually move her, which costs a bit more time than just repositioning her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so funny. So, yeah. it's like, it didn't even matter if she should answer. Uh, this is a pretty cool map, even though it's very short. So this is probably the boss that doesn't actually suck that much. Um, but we also have two side objectives, which is to recruit Percival, because he's kind of really good. <laughs> um, he's basically Marcus and Gerard, but with really good bases. And um, the lady is going to go ahead and get the Hermern Staff, which I think we're only going to use once in this run. Or, spoiler alert, the Warp Staff. Makes sense. So, and conveniently enough, there's a Cavalier that attacked Roy at two range next to Janna. So he kind of blocked off other one range units from reaching us, so that's convenient. Yeah, I was surprised you dropped him a two range from the boss, because he's just ate a free attack for no reason. But obviously, this is the only way the formation works out the way it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, if we wanted to avoid a two-range attack on a boss and go for an enemy phase kill, we'd have to drop Roy, like, three tiles away, and that's just a bit of a pain because we'd expose Roy even more. Yeah. So we're better off just getting a player phase kill. I mean, he's on a mountain. Like, it's not that hard to make him dodge this attack anyway. If you yeah. Want to. Oh, there's Percival. Yay. There's Hermann's staff. 
So Percival's like a um, lady that doesn't fly, basically. Yeah. Hey, he's kind of a better milady at, that doesn't fly at this point, but like that's because milady got really early promoted. So. Yeah. So this chapter is pretty neat. This is probably like one of my favorite chapters to execute in all chapters because like in all chapters you have, you want to get the member card, you want to keep Douglas alive, you want to get someone up to Zs. So you have like all these little side objectives to worry about. Um, but we kind of want to do the opposite here. We want to kill Douglas. We don't want to bother with Zs at all in this category. Unfortunately, Roy kind of starts in the far bottom left corner. Um, so we kind of have to do a bit of a rescue chain to get him to catch up to the right side. Yeah, because the right route is much faster to get to the actual throne, right? Yeah. We're going to do a bit of a dance here. And pretty much just get Shauna up. Um, so yeah, but in all chapters, we actually use like a really big fancy rescue chain because we need to get like multiple units and Milady to the upper left corner on top of getting Roy to the throne, on top of someone getting the member card. Um, but in this case, we're only using Shauna and carrying Roy because we don't care about that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, uh... Yeah. I was gonna say, this is how I expected Lauren to be used the majority of the run, actually. It's like, dance turn one, do nothing else. And I think this is the first time she's done it in a run. Yeah, that's, like, the that's desert. pretty normal, though. But yeah, in all chapters, um, she actually dances like three or four times in this map, just because, just to help support the really fancy rescue chain. But, watch the all chapters run in RPG Living Break. I'm very proud of that run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool, well commentated, and it has a very pleasant meme surprise at the end, if you haven't seen it. And confirm, watch it run. But any percent's pretty cool too. It's also just a lot faster, so mm -hmm. that's nice. Oh, we're dropping Roy now. Okay, interesting. I guess I don't Shanna. I remember has to why fight. I dropped him. I guess she has to fight. Like, I don't think Shanna holding a javelin, holding Roy, still doubles everything. So maybe that's why. Kill a bishop, maybe. Maybe. I mean, I, it, it doesn't really matter much for me, right? Because you could just pick him up after again, right? Like next turn. So. Yeah, I, I'll just. Uh, I'm sure I'll just end up picking up Roy again, but I don't remember. It's like, for example, imagine that all it did is like get these two enemies out of the way. That's like two enemies that don't move again for the rest of the chapter. Might have had something to do with the hit rate on the bishop too. She probably would have doubled him while carrying Roy, but I don't know. Yeah, it's been a while. Bishops were pretty bad. Yeah, and like Percival's role here is to kind of just kill these enemies that would distract us otherwise and waste time. So he's just kind of here to block them off. What is my purpose? Kill one mage? Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, I think Boris was actually used in this map too. Like, yeah. I think he picked up a unit in the bottom upper left corner of the deployment slots, and that's just to avoid getting purged every turn. <laughs> like, it's faster to have Boris just like pick someone up as opposed to undeploy someone. So, Boris useful. That's I think that was Boris. It was an armor knight. <laughs> yeah, it's, it might have been Boris. I mean, you have them all. <laughs> I, I do have them all. <laughs> It's funny, some units you just completely skip that you normally like get every playthrough, like um, Lou, for example. But here it's like, alright, you, you use what you can use. <laughs> like, that's that, these yeah. units, like, for example, Boars and uh, Wendy are like actually somewhat sought after units for draft races just because they exist while playing as fast as possible. And the same cannot be said uh -huh. for a lot of units that like sort of set enemies, for example, like Rutger, for example, he doesn't exist. Yeah, like in, like in a draft race setting, you absolutely care a lot more about like the recruitment cost, whether it be like how much effort it takes or how many turns or how much time it takes. By Douglas. Oh, by Douglas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Douglas again saved five minutes by not existing anymore. Yeah. Probably. And again, another case of having Shauna on low HP, so everyone goes after Douglas, goes after her instead of Roy. No. This boss was actually not too much of a pain in the end, a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, this boss didn't get throne bonuses. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> that is true. Good Martian. Okay, route split time. Gee, I wonder where we're going. The route with the, yeah, um... about the nomads that we definitely both recruited? <laughs> or the route about where that Shanna dictates? <laughs> so, so Mecha says something about how he expected every chapter to go with, like, Flyer carries Roy, Flyer gets danced, Dancer gets carried away. This is, this is that, basically. Uh -huh. Dance, then rescue Leila and get her out of there. Yeah, and again, it will stop like all the enemies that cannot water walk from moving at all, I think, because they just don't see any valid targets. Yeah. I used this a lot of my uh, FE6 FE Lin run as well. Well, sometimes I used it. Uh, you. Ooh, okay. And now enemies will move. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, this is she's on a tile that I can technically traverse, so let's, let's go all the way around. That will definitely work out for us. <laughs> yeah. 
So we're actually gonna, I'm gonna be doing like a Ro dropping Roy near the throne next map and Roy's gonna have to survive. There's like a Purge Bishop that does a lot of damage to him. I think the Purge Bishop can actually kill him um, in this turn. So yeah, my notes say that Roy has to dodge a 42 displayed hit from Purge, which is like a 30% chance. And there's also another Bishop that'll try to put someone to sleep, which is a 6% chance with one RN. So it's actually 6%. I to the pur oh it was because it's major weakness. I was like, there's no way he gets Oko by a purge, but then I realized. Yeah, he yeah. gets weakened, so he has to dodge the purge. This I think the seed wasn't too bad to find, but I could be remembering wrong. I mean, Basically, he has to dodge one or like, two, right? Like, technically. Yeah, he has to dodge one. Basically just has to dodge one attack. Mm -hmm. If you see me do like more than ten RN burns, that means the RNGC was a pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think the sleep guy went for Shadow, right? That's probably because yeah. of the point order. The point order or closer. Maybe. Yeah. Could be it. I think distance doesn't matter as much in FE6, it's just like raw stats in it. Shadow probably has better rest than Roy at this point. Mm -hmm. But deployment order is definitely a huge factor. Oh, spoiler alert, that boss sucked. Oh, yeah, he did. You know how I know that he, that he sucked? Why? He's in FE6. Got <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think my notes say that Tashana had to land two 60% hit rates in a row. And one of them has to be a crit, which is like a 28% chance. Well, 28% crit rate. So, not terrible to manipulate, but mm -hmm. still in all. Okay, and this chapter is kind of a nice excuse to get more sword rank on Shauna. Oh, just start off Ow. getting hit by a ballista like Lamau. <laughs> well, that's somewhat intentional, because as I mentioned, there's a pattern of getting Shauna low on HP, so more on enemies attack her instead of Roy. Yeah, I mean, it's worked out so far. Might as well keep doing it. Mm hmm. And again, I think Milady was like, it doesn't look like she's unreachable, but she's on a river tile, so she actually cannot be reached. So, again, I think only enemies that, well, previous turns, only enemies that can fly are trying to reach her. But now, Shanna's on land, so don't go for her anyway. Mm. Yep. The boss has purge, I think? Yeah, he does. And I think there's a, um, I think there's a berserk priest, but he probably didn't have enough magic to go for you. Mm. Yeah, so like, the nice thing about having Shauna with boots is like, if you have more mobility, especially, in other words, if you have boots and fly, it's a lot easier to burn random numbers because like, if you have more options of how to move your cursor, then that means you burn more random numbers per set of burns, if that makes any sense. So like, each one of those burns you saw on that player phase was probably like six or seven random numbers burned per move. Whereas if you try to use like an armor knight, you're only burning like one to two per set of moves. I remember trying to make that video where I explained that uh, 99 hit can miss in FE6, and I had to burn so many random numbers. I'm definitely appreciated uh, <laughs> doing many at the time with Boots Milady. Yeah. <laughs> That's another annoying thing about like when you're trying to route the GBA Fire Emblem when you're like in a tight corridor, because like if, even if you have a mounted unit in a tight corridor, um, by the way, that boss sucked, um, you just don't have many movement options in terms of like how many paths you can take so like even if you try to do like a set of RN burns you're not gonna burn like six or seven at a time you're only gonna burn like two so it's just a lot slower than using like a wide open space to burn random numbers shout out to FEA prologue that's literally a corner <laughs> yeah yeah FEA prologue you have to like into go out of the way to burn random numbers because like if you try like you have to use Seth to burn random numbers in like the upper left corner in the middle of nowhere well, now Chad is like, discarding something yeah. I saw it I saw that I think isn't there a sleep bishop there? Or sleep druid? There oh, is sleep time. druid. Yeah, so we actually got Nime, hooray. Yay. Spoiler alert, we're using warp. Um, so yeah, and we need we cannot warp to a tile we can't see, so we drop Chad forward to get as much distance as possible. And this chapter is probably the worst chapter to route manipulation for manipulation because like you you kinda wanna be on these peaks, but you have like twenty different options of where to move Shauna. So you have to just like trial and error every single one of those, like 100 seats each, to see like which one's fastest, which ones you sh does Shauna not get killed on. It's a massive pain in the butt, and I have to do the same thing next turn too. Like, which tile can I move Shauna to and drop Roy to make sure that Roy doesn't get blocked, and make sure that neither of them die, and see which one is fastest. And it's ugh. <laughs> I think like half of oh rip Chad rip Cole. So I think like half of my routing for both this category and all chapters is this map alone. <laughs> like, have, this map is so bad. It's it's just so bad to route. I just want you to know you're not alone. Donlan also hated routing this map. For the same I, I, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> it's just terrible. Like, it's just because like you have so many options. So you have to like test all of them to see which ones works and which one saves you the most time. So it's, 
sucks. Mm -hmm. Surprised that the fasting like option still included that. Because it's not getting healed by a physic, but I guess you were never gonna kill him with a like what are you using iron sword? Yeah, I just couldn't find anything better either. Yeah. Just, yeah, I'm sure there are better seeds, but I'm human. There's only so much I can find. That explains why you killed Colm. <laughs> well that was kind of intentional, but yes. <laughs> I mean I guess he reduces fog of war vision if he dies. Yeah, you, you want him to die so that you don't see as many units move. Oh Colm. I guess if you wanted to live, he shouldn't have looked into the fog like that. <laughs> This is literally why you put him there in the first place. You're so cruel, bro. Welcome why to speedrunning. Like why are you like this? Yeah, so now we're like out of range of everything besides like one Falcon line, which they have the same move as our Paladins. So there's not much you can do about that. Yeah, and then some. Uh, this boss, by the way, does not suck. I can tell you that much because they're flying. Yeah, I like my brain always thinks that this boss really sucks, but she doesn't. I just associate killing her with routing this entire map and this entire <laughs> map. She's so deserved like, I... to a really harsh dinner. It's like, I think there was one time where Dondon was streaming, like, a practice draft race, and he was on this chapter, and I'm like, yeah, this boss is terrible. He's like, this boss isn't actually bad. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, actually, yeah, you're right. I just associate her with this map. <laughs> oh, but there's a D sword rank, by the way. So, nice. Armor Slayer hype. Let's go. I mean, it's going to be another two chapters from now. It's like, it sounds closer than it is, but, you know, no guidance will do that to you. No guidance. Like it doesn't feel like we're at end game, but we're we're really close to end game. So, oh yeah, pretty fast run. Especially because no uh, post chapter twenty two. So this is just last Ilya chapter, Murdoch chapter, final chapter. Oh, shout out to Force again. <laughs> yeah, Force MVP. Yo. So the reason why he's there is because one, he has con, so he can rescue stuff, and two, he just happens to be deployed in a nice spot. So that's why he's being deployed. That's why you're alive and Colma's dead, Boris. <laughs> oh, that's a nice warp down. Mm -hmm. It saves a lot. They just don't get hit by Berserk, I guess, and you're good. Yeah, which we... And we don't want to see any Berserk animation, so we rescue Nime out of there it's just and get everyone else out of there, so we don't see the animation of Berserk at all. Oh, is no one armed? Uh, I think they're all just out of range, period. Of the Berserk? Does he have that yeah. little range? I know he stands still. Like, I think he never we're just moves. really far away. That's why we have like, everyone kind of cuddled in the little two by two square. Yeah, but what about Roy and Chenna? Um, um like, good question. I if I was him, I'd go for like one of those two. Yeah, that's a good question. Maybe I'm remembering wrong. Could be remembering. I, wrong. Didn't, I don't. I didn't see any pure waters or anything, right? Like, yeah, no. They should be le legit targets. Okay, like, no, okay, there it is. Okay, okay. Oh, that's wrong. asleep for our Nime. Oh, yeah, that's asleep. Which. <laughs> Missed somehow. Bottom, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no, he just, he just does. He just uses it. Okay, mystery solved. Just yeah. miss. Just miss Lamau. Oh, wait, you already have armor. Oh, you aren't armor. You got an armor slayer disc boss? Yeah, we apparently don't. I don't know why I don't. Yeah, that's yeah. a good question. <laughs> that's hammer and on warp, which I think had three uses left? Yeah, but like, we don't need every single use. So yeah. we might as well take advantage of it and earn it now while we have a free player phase and also manipulate a magic level on Hime because we need the extra warp range. <laughs> This is one timeline. Wait, so what is Shanna using? Silver? Uh, Killer Lance. Oh, okay. Double kill. Double crit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember why I don't use the Armor Slayer. Maybe I just didn't consider it for whatever reason. Oh, no, I know why. Because Maybe. we don't have enough uses. <laughs> we have we have three uses at Armor Slayer right now. Oh, that makes sense. Can't it. I mean, you have more uses on OJ, but like, why get that one where you just do this, right? <laughs> yeah, like the Iron Burns there are kind of a pain in the butt because we need a double crit, but like it as you saw, it wasn't even that long. I think you might have needed like a single armor slayer crit anyway, instead, which might have been just as painful. Because yeah, you had less crit on that. Just, that boss is just very tanky. Yeah, he, he sucks, you could say. Uh, yeah, dance, yeah, warp. <laughs> prediction, dance, warp. <laughs> very stupid. Uh, wow, how did you know? <laughs> I don't know, man. I've played this game before. Or I could use the same strategy. <laughs> yep, so there's a warp. And yeah, there's so a bunch fun. of reinforcement zones that we want to avoid, so. Such so this map is pretty horrible, so because well, spoiler alert, the boss sucks. But <laughs> um, in all chapters, the boss doesn't suck as much because at this point we've had Shauna and Roy build up exactly sixty turns of support. So like this turn right here in all chapters, we exactly unlock their support, which gives five crit. That is exactly enough for Shauna to have some crit rate on Murdoch with the Armor Slayer. We don't have that, and we can't two shot him with the Armor Slayer. So we literally cannot one round him, and it's impossible. Um, he takes. He also tanks two Killer Lance crits, so that's not an option. Mm -hmm. So the alternative here is let me read out my notes here. That's coming up. So 
On the boss's turn, Roy survives Murdoch with 1 HP. He can only get hit once out of everything that attacks him. Everything has 50% hit, except the Sage has 70 ish hit. Um, so he can only get hit one he can only get hit once out of four times. Roy has to land two light brand hits. The light brand does exactly 10 damage at range. Um, his hit rate is 44% displayed. So that's around a 40% true hit, which is a 15% chance to land two hits in a row on the boss. So you'll see it here. Um, Roy also needs to not kill the sage. So he has he has a 94% true hit. Two chances. So he has to miss once out of two times. Why? So he avoids a level up. Um, so yeah, I had to manipulate a 6% chance to miss the sage that's about to attack him. Six displayed, so right? Yeah, uh, actual 6%. Okay, so his sorry. actual displayed hit rate on this stage right here is 83 hit. Okay. True hit's 94. So yeah, that misses intentional. Otherwise, <laughs> he would level up. So this this took like an entire night to find. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Shauna has to kill Murdoch with an armor slayer, which isn't really too big of a deal because like she has really high hit rate on him. Yeah, just dodge them all, right? That's it. Yeah, she, she has 90 hit. She's not going to miss, and it's not bad at all. But like, if we had the um, Roy Shauna support, we can just avoid having to deal with Roy hitting Murdoch with the light brand, and then just have Shauna get a five percent crit. But, just rig a C's with Lady. <laughs> oh, oh no, no, okay, okay. So, if you remember from earlier where we killed off Walt, I'm maintain, I'm gonna be maintaining the same random number seed into the next map. Oh, okay. So all those iron burns is to manipulate the stats of an enemy hero in the last chapter. <laughs> and the last chapter's gimmick is that you have to get your units to the upper left corner and upper right corner. Um, I'll explain this now because I go back through it pretty quickly. And the heroes on those tiles have really high stats, even by normal mode standards. So like, if you just reset and reset the RNG and then try the chapter, you cannot kill the upper left corner hero. There's like no option to kill him without someone like Shauna, but Shauna is doing other stuff. So what I did here is to burn random numbers to manipulate that upper left corner hero upper left hero stats to be lower than usual. And that brings him barely under the benchmark for Fa to get a crit on him and kill him. Wow. Cool. Also, and that's like... why yeah, I didn't say here. And this is like a really scary chapter because if I make a mistake here, I could redo it into the past two, past two maps. It's pretty horrible. Oh yeah, I can imagine. But I mean... I did not say it, so... Yeah. Just, just don't make a mistake, Lamal. I guess also good to add, like, we didn't go to 21x because... Not because we didn't hit the turn limit, because obviously it was really fast, but because we didn't have Zs, right? So that's Yeah, we, we skipped skip the garden. Mm -hmm. This is one of the coolest chapters in the speedrun. Um, it's a lot cooler in all chapters, honestly, because you have more options. And um, we actually take advantage of the rescue, death, remove glitch. Unfortunately, in this category, we don't, just because we don't really have those op as many options with that. Um, yeah, we didn't but, see that much, you're right. Yeah, you're not, we're not going to see it at all in this run. No, I just I tried to look for a way to do it in this map, but I couldn't really find a convenient way to do it. By the way, that's barely a kill. Yeah, that was 48 damage on a 47 HP general, I think. Mm -hmm. The first he had like one less strength, or that general. <laughs> I love why you move Larm first. <laughs> it's like why? <laughs> oh, that's oh yeah, better shut off the berserk guy. Yeah, uh, even if we can dodge all these berserks with manipulation, we're better off just silencing him because yeah. watching one silence animation is faster than three berserk animations. That is exactly what I was going to say. Trust me. Yep. And that was the entire reason we had um, Sophia pick up the silence staff all the way back in the desert chapter, just for that turn. Are you going to like open a chest to convoy dump the warp staff? Yep. Cool. I was, I was hoping for that. This, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, hmm. Builder is nice. Yeah, do this first. I was like, okay, you're going to do that first, right? Yeah, okay, so you do that, and you can double trade with the Paladins, get the chest, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, guess correctly. And Nime is now level 20. It's a like pretty good level up, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> By Nime, By Nime standards. standards yeah, <laughs> exactly. No magic, though. <laughs> bad level up. So yeah, now that um, our two Paladins are carrying Nime, um, we have the Warp Staff. They're going to pick up this chest item and send the Warp Staff to Convoy. Um... This, I think Percy has like 60 hit on this hero, and he has to land one out of two crits. And note that Percy did not level up. That's intentional. Is that the guy with the brave sword? I think it was a, I think it was a brave axe. They both have brave weapons. Yeah. I don't remember. Off the top of my I just head. don't it's remember. It's probably which a brave axe because Percy's kill lance hit rates were not great. We'll probably be able to tell by what Milady does. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Milady is carrying Fa right now. Oh well, yeah, I guess it's not going to be a weapon triangle there then. For Fa. Yeah. <laughs> One of the older routes actually use I green with the brave, I think with the brave bow, um, to help out. But I've 
skipped out on that because the Brave Bow costs time to get. That makes and sense. I figured out this RNG is do so that we can just use Fall instead. Mm -hmm. oh, that's good. She will level up though from like getting the guy. She I will guess. get a level. But like, we, we just don't have other options. We don't yeah. have anyone else to handle that. It's like like Shauna, but she's in the middle. See, so yeah, that crit right there is the entire reason I RNG manipulated the hero stats. Did she do 15 for crit? Uh, my notes say she. HP? She did 16 damage to this one with a 14% crit rate, and Damn. this hero has 45 HP. If we did not, if we reset it to seed with a save and quit, that hero would have, I think, like 46, 47 HP and one more defense. So she would do 45 damage, and that's not enough. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so it's like barely on the benchmark, and that's why I had to do that. I'm sorry, I was just reacting to like, oh, we're gonna warp again, like the fourth oh, time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the hero stats suck too. Oh. And then Roy has to go in front of the door, open it up. Oh uh, no. No. That's yeah, Rashana. You know what's coming. No. You know what's coming. <laughs> Lots of manipulation here. This manipulation is a massive pain in the butt because, like, Shauna and Roy need to survive. Roy also, you can see the stats here for yourself. Roy has to land two hits here. Boy, a 4% crit would have been. Same. He does doubles that feel. A 4% crit would have been very nice, but I just couldn't really go for it because we have so much other stuff to worry about with this RNG seed. And you know, I was saying, oh no, because I was really afraid you were gonna like kill off Shanna somehow, but no, it's just Laram. Okay, goodbye. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I thought you were worried about Lalem dying. I'm like, well, that's a, well, we'll see. That was expected. <laughs> that was within the realm of expectation. No, not Yoda, bro. Okay, good. Yeah, an older any percent route had like five more units die, <laughs> but in this case, it's only like two casualties. Yeah, the draft race, the starting area is an absolute massacre in that place. <laughs> so many people just distracting berserks and killing each other. Or yeah, running around doing rough. nothing. This chapter is just rough. <laughs> That's rough, buddy. But, yeah, and now we go for a double kill and answer crit with Shauna. Um, in all chapters, Roy's stats are better, so you can actually go for a double crit on Zephyr and just one around him. And we also have boots built up at this point, so the all chapters strat for this is a lot cleaner than any percent, but we just did not have time to buy and use boots. Yeah. So we settle for this. And a bit more manipulation for kill. Yeah, minimizing this guy is like really important because he has forced animations. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and spoiler alert, she dodges. Yeah. Well, I guess we can officially say this boss sucks. Yeah, he does. And now you know, in FE6 speedruns, even though it's manipulated, most bosses suck unless they fly. They all suck. <laughs> and there we go. Oh well. So We totally well, saved the world. Don't worry about our doing, we're fine. So, fun fact, um, this speedrun that you just saw um, was took 1 hour, 6 minutes, 59 seconds. Um, if I was four, 7 frames off from a 107, so if I hesitated even one more time in any menu, then that would have been a 1 hour, 7 minute run. <laughs> so like every bit does count, but yeah. First time Germany, save the <laughs> frames. Yeah, that's good. I and mean, this routing process is like, I talked a lot about how much of a pain it is to route, but like, it, was, it is a lot of work and sometimes a pain, but it's also very rewarding because this, the RNG manipulated runs are obviously really different, but they also let you do a lot of stuff that you couldn't do otherwise, and it's pretty cool to see that. Um, and also kind of like commentate about that because this is the kind of run where like you kind of need good commentary or... Yeah, otherwise it's just like Roy and Shanna dodge forever and get great level ups towards the challenge, right? But the challenge is in finding the exact right way to do just that. And the challenge is to do it fast too, so... Yeah, I like to draw yeah. a comparison to like playing Fire Emblem, like LTCs and like anything, honestly, with like the best units. Like, it might seem a bit boring to use like really overpowered tools to beat the game, but even within that, there is a metagame that some strategies are still better or faster than others, and finding out which ones are better and faster than others is still a tough process, like, as long as you put the bar high enough, any playthrough can be challenging in its own way. This is just another mm -hmm. example, but you don't see a lot of process behind it, so I do agree that commentary is very important to enlighten everyone in that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as for, like, this kind of run, I, mean, I definitely want to give a shout-out to Legrand Gran, who I believe was the original guy who wrote the route for this. Um, I mean, I made a lot of changes to it to see what make it what it is today, but Legrand Gran is actually the same guy who, what's it called, did a commentated LTC based off of Beam Crash's LTC for yeah, the same. Yeah, that one's great. Yeah, it's pretty great. I highly recommend watching that. If um, you like watching units die, that should be your favorite <laughs> one. If you like watching Wendy get a secret book and then crit someone and then die. <laughs> Already oh, right, fed her the secret book? I forgot about that part. Yeah, he fed her the secret book, so she has crit. Pretty funny. But 
there, there was also a lot of other people, both who directly contributed and also not quite as directly contributed, but still contributed, maybe just from a forum post, like the story I shared about Don Don. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of people who contributed, and like I also want I just want to emphasize that like speedrunning is just like LT saying, speedrunning is as different as it is a community effort for the most part. So like all these threats you see is always community effort. Yeah, why why route alone when you can like suffer together, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. You gotta suffer together to make it fun. It is fun to like have a channel to vent in like, oh my god, I just can't find the stupid si never mind, I got a perfect level up. Nice. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the R the GPA RNG gods just do that for you. Like I I guess Sacred Stones um Erica route's kind of my baby personally because like I pretty much redid the entire route myself, and that's the only GB Fire Emblem where like I kind of wrote the route from scratch, kind of. And I, I talk, I'm talking about this because there was this one turn in Chapter Two where Vanessa gets like three Slimlands crits in a row <laughs> on these bandits on peaks. <laughs> I so I'm just like, how did I find a sleep like that? Okay, whatever, we take those. It's ex extra experience for her. <laughs> I remember yeah, having to go through a similar process. I remember Reg were having to rig that for the uh, the border and got a V8 thing. Oh uh, yeah, the, the I secrets. Yeah. That. I mean, yeah. again, just like just like I said before, it's it's a given that getting three Slimlands crits is a good thing, but finding out whether it's actually worth trying to rig it is like another thing entirely. Because I'm assuming like you're not using uh, a program to find all that stuff like I know you can like find player phase crits for example pretty easily with a Lua script but almost everything else you have to find like enemy phase performance especially you just have to brute force those right sort of yeah so we have a script that helps with finding enemy phases but like what it basically does when you run it which is written by Vicon and polished up by TR143 another GPA fine router what it basically does is like it sets a safe state ends turn runs through the enemy phase after it's done it goes back to that safe state uses one random number and does that again so it pretty much goes by every single random number, playing that enemy phase over and over again. And you have to kind of see like which ones gives you the results you want. So yeah. it's basically brute forcing it. So enemy phases, you kind of have to just brute force, but that tool does help with that a lot. Yeah, I remember uh, trying to use that tool myself to figure out how to get like, I think I had to get like an enemy phase crit or something uh, on a boss that like moved like five after five other enemies or something. It was very painful. and. Uh, if I recall, you just had to sit there and watch all those enemy faces anyway, just in case the right one pops up, you don't want to miss it, right? Like, you can't just mm -hmm. make the script do all the work for you, I think. Yeah, you still have to, like, kind of keep an eye out for it <laughs> and just watch. <laughs> and, like, sometimes you'll see, like, the random number being, like, a 4, you'll see, like, a 4% somewhere, and you're like, ooh, I can try to manipulate that, that crit. But sometimes it ends up being impossible, because, like, just due to how sometimes, like, the RNG kind of converges a lot, because, like, sometimes you'll miss and you only use two random numbers, because no random number is used for crit. Or sometimes you'll hit a land a hit and you burn three random numbers. A lot of times you'll have like clusters of three or four seeds in a row that converge on the same thing. It's so like you end up just not being able to get that one crit you need because it gets skipped over. Yeah, and, and you have to have wait to for the next one. one. <laughs> I hope that works. Yeah. It's like missing the bus, basically. Pretty much. It's basically a bus, yeah. A ra kind of a randomish, mm -hmm. arbitrary bus. Yeah, I think the worst feeling from my experience with those is trying to rig those for like days on end and then you finally get it. And you post somewhere and they're like, you could have just, you know, rescue dropped one like spot further and not need to crit at all. I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, you were right. Like that was the exact situation I was just talking about. I had to rig uh, a kill enough Cyclops boss and Ephraim routes. And if I just like figured out my rescue chain a little bit better, instead of having to rig like a double javelin crit on enemy phase, I could have just like been in front of him with like a killing edge or something. It would have been so much easier. Oh, that's the worst. Like sometimes you'll just find like some random strat change and then you just have to like, redo everything from there on out because the RNG is going to be different. Yeah. And then, like, even though the RNG is in your favor, I still think, like, even with the best log possible, obviously strats can still be better or worse, because, like, trying to find exactly where to drop Roy, for example, in certain situations, or uh, what weapon to use on Shanna, is it, like, for example, is it worth, like, if you're fighting Murdoch, try to determine that it's worth to actually grind her sword rank up to D, just to use an armor slayer in what was basically a one battle. <laughs> was pretty funny mm -hmm. to me. So like that still yeah. that still takes quite some work to figure out just if it's worth raising that. Like even the fact that you have to like something super basic like training Roy itself is not something that's immediately obvious it's something you have to do in FE6 because most of his actions in this run are C's, which doesn't require a whole lot of stats to do. Mm -hmm. 
Like, it's debatable. Like, it might not be worth training him, honestly. I've never directly tested that, honestly. So, like, for all I know, it might not. There might be someone who makes a route where that never trains Roy and it's, ends up being faster. Yeah. I mean, what what would the consequences be? Would it just be he just rip more dodges, Lamao? Because uh, he's also, like, a good combat unit every now and then. Like, whenever Shanna can, she just drops him and has him help out to, like, clear out enemies. Yeah, like, that's the thing. There would be some cases where you have to manipulate even more crits or have to find a different way to make sure that you don't get blocked because Roy just can't kill stuff and so on. Yeah, or you might have to so. use Marcus in some places just to get an enemy out of the way. Because, like, I'm just thinking, like, chapter 12, for example, with that situation with the fighter and the warrior. The fighter clogs up the two-range spot that you have to get through eventually so that the mm -hmm. warrior suicides. But if you don't have Roy, you have no way to kill that fighter on the next player phase. And you can't do it with Shanna because she needs to move, move, move. So... Mm -hmm. I don't yeah, think so base Roy can kill that guy. Does he? He starts with D or C swords. Uh, D. Yeah. So we so do actually raise the sword rank. I think he hits C swords by chapter eight. Yeah. Which is really important because that lets him use the light brand and the worm slayer and the killing edge. Yeah. I think the correct call, like, I'm not an expert or anything, but the correct call is probably training Roy anyway. Because, for example, like Don Don's run also trains Roy. Uh, run mm -hmm. on his run. I, the the, the draft race plans he has always train Roy as well. And it, it helps that Roy supports all the draft race carries, like Lance, Alan, and uh, Shanna, not Blade, oh, yeah, but everyone else. So that's very helpful too. And he also supports Marcus. So in all those cases, Roy supports itself ends up being helpful, and then again survive. Of course, Donnan works with different different parameters, because he is guaranteed to... Um, he's not guaranteed to do anything, like he's not RNG manipulation beforehand, so he just has to make, make good plans. Nice ranks, by the way. <laughs> a, A... a. Oh, oh, I actually don't know what those are. That's probably one of those is probably Addy, survival. Oh, one of those is probably survival. You know what? If this was university, you would have passed. So there you go. You got a C. Yep. C is a passing grade. Congrats. I agree. Yeah. This is pretty fun, though. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Is there anything after this? The, the character endings? I think it was just the character endings. I don't remember, actually. I just like recording life. credits afterwards, usually, but yeah. But yeah, um, last thing I would do want to say, um, if you enjoyed this kind of run, um, again, third time I'm advertising this, I highly recommend watching my Fire Emblem 6 all chapters run from RPG Limit Break. If you look up RPG LB, Finding Blade, you'll find it. Um, I'm particularly very proud of that run because um, it had really pretty good commentary, some nice puns and memes, um, and there is a very nice surprise for Endgame for those who have not seen it. I'm not Can confirm, it. have seen it. Worth watching. Yes. It is very Even if good. just the final chapter, we'll honestly watch all of it. <laughs> but And it also just has, like, admittedly, the first seven chapters are exactly the same as this, because there's not much reason to change them. But, like, the strats are honestly kind of more interesting from there on out, in my opinion. But it's, it's also just a very different run, too. You get to see the guided maps, you get to see more units being used and such. So, yeah, I highly recommend. At, at around, like, chapter eight, it changes, right? Because that's, like, the first guy in chapter requirements. Like, you don't kill yeah. Lina. And then from there, it just kind of becomes very different because Shanna becomes stronger, gets more XP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you just have more experience to go around with Shanna and Roy, so they end up being better overall. And we, unfortunately, we don't really see Fa in all chapters, but that's okay. That's okay. We saw Fa. And you today. also get to see the death glitch, where if oh. someone who's carrying someone dies, you get to move again. Yeah. Or did, the one who was rescued. Did you see that it got bugged in my run that it didn't quite work? Uh, but I was trying to kill Lance against Fear. Oh, yeah, that was in the Fog of War. I'm trying to remember... I remember yeah. Razor screwed around with it for a while, and he, I don't remember if he figured out what the hell went wrong there. I, I thought my theory was that it was because uh, his turn was already used up or something. There was something about it. It was like, yeah, he was, was he was training or something? It was it weird. Matter, but I don't remember. Yeah, that is really weird. I'm not sure. The situation for us was um, I was trying to... I think it was carrying... Noah, so you can recruit Fear, but I also wanted to kill off Lance because he was taking up a support slot. And so it's like, mm -hmm. I'll use Lance Suicide into Fear, and then uh, Noah gets dropped in place, and he can then recruit Fear with the turn he gets because I guess we haven't even explained it, but if a unit dies in FP6 uh, while holding Roy, if they die, they'll drop Roy, and Roy is like, his turn is available again, which mm -hmm. is what I was trying to reviews, but it didn't quite work out that way, unfortunately. Yeah. That glitch is very useful for speedrunning, though. Yeah, it's, it's like both in a vacuum, it sounds really useful, and it is, but it's also really hard to set up. Um, so the all chapters run doesn't really use it much outside of like end game, basically. It is very useful in that one, game, one chapter, but otherwise it's 
it requires having like a lot of extra units to move around and have a setup to get themselves killed and such. Yeah, it's better than LTC, but you know, it costs you a unit, which is like you don't have infinite <laughs> of those, so yeah, you, you have to be you careful where you deliver it, where you use it. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's the run. Hope you all enjoyed. Thanks for watching. And thanks for having me. This was fun. See ya. Hope you all enjoyed. It. See you around. Started replaying the file just as the ending, but it's fine. <laughs>